Hello everyone, welcome to the final video in our Reading Through the Bible series, looking at the Gospel of Mark. Today I'll be reading Mark chapter 16. I encourage you to follow along with me in whatever translation that you have with you right now. I'll be personally reading out of the English Standard Version. And if you have any questions, please make sure to leave them down in the comment section down below, and I will try and respond to them as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, I'm going to pray, and then we'll hop into the reading. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this video series. I thank you for the people that you will just use this uh, video series to help. I thank you, Father, for the ways that you're just going to bless those who don't know you to be able to come into a relationship and know you as a result of being able to interact with your word. I thank you, Father, that we as believers will understand what it means to go out and share you in a way that represents you well and your love for them and for those that are around us. I thank you for the ways that you're just going to bless the reading of this word. I thank you for just giving me the inspiration for making this video series, and I thank you for using me to reach these people, whoever watches this video. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's hop into it. Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him, and as they mourned and wept, but when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at a table. And he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying signs. And that concludes our reading for today um, and our reading of Mark and the gospel, just reading the gospel according to Mark and seeing how God used Mark to write this beautiful story and write the life and ministry of Jesus. But I want you to know that the story does not stop there. I want you to know that the story continues with you. I want you to know that if you haven't accepted Christ into your life, that you have the opportunity to have a relationship with this same Jesus that it talks about in the Bible. I want you to know that he loves you and he has compassion for you and he wants to be in a relationship with you. You may not know it, but God's been pursuing you your whole life and he wants to have this relationship with you. Maybe this is the first time you're ever hearing the Bible or maybe even hearing something or passages of scripture from the Bible. I encourage you, go and find a copy of the Bible. Um, there are tons of free versions online. There are even um, free versions as an app. Um, two that I'd recommend are Bible Gateway and the YouVersion app. Um, both of those are great apps for being able to have a free copy of the Bible. It is electronic. I personally prefer a hard copy of the Bible just because I like to hold books in my hand and I feel like there's something special about it. But I want you to know that Jesus does want a relationship with you. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want you to know that all you have to do is ask for him to come into your life. Ask for him to forgive your sins and repent of your old um, ways and all of the sin that you've committed. Because everyone sinned 
and is short of the glory of God. It says that in the Bible, but I want you to know that you have the opportunity to be saved by Jesus because there's no other system in the world where the God wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus wants to have a relationship with you and he's real and he loves you so much. And I want you to know that. And I don't want you to forget that if, you're, um, if you don't know him. And I want you to know knowing him is not hard. Getting to know him is fun and it's an adventure. It is such an amazing journey. I've loved every moment that I've had to spend with Jesus. He's my best friend. He's my closest friend. I know he's my advocate and my savior and my Lord. He's also my teacher. He shows me everything, not just about his word, but he teaches me what life looks like and how to treat other people. And I want you to know he can do the same thing for you. And so if you don't know him, I want you to pray right now that Jesus will just come into your life. Ask for forgiveness of your sins and repent of your old ways. Because Jesus, when you accept him into your life and ask for forgiveness of your sins and repent, I promise you, he will come into your life and he will radically change you. No, you won't look different. You won't have like a different appearance. Your face won't look different. You won't be a different height or you won't feel like you're 10 times stronger or feel like you're 10 times different than you were the moment before you just prayed. But I want you to know that God is going to begin to do a work in you that he will not stop until the day that you meet him. And I want you to know that pursuing him is the best thing and the ultimate thing that you need to do in your life. I promise you it is not something... Sorry, it is something that you will never f regret. And so I pray that if you haven't already, that you will just pray that prayer. And that um, if you haven't, I'll pray this prayer right now with you. And it, then you can actually start this journey like I started many years ago. And maybe one day I'll share my testimony on my channel. But I want you to know right now that God wants to be able to use you to be able to reach the world as well because there are many others that need to see his love. This is specifically for believers who've been watching this video series. I hope that you've enjoyed going back through God's word if you've read Mark before. And if you haven't, then this is a great opportunity to spend some time in Mark. Mark is the shortest um, of the gospels. And it, yes, I, Mark, it should be the shortest of the gospels. And so the thing is you have the opportunity to interact with God in such an amazing and unique way. And so I encourage you to do that, believers. My brothers and sisters, I seriously implore you, do as what Jesus said at the end of Mark chapter 16. Go and preach the gospel to all nations and make disciples, as he said. Sharing what Jesus has taught you, but also sharing with other people that he's used around you to pour into those that you think that need to hear about um, the gospel and know, need to know Jesus' love. But for those who don't know Jesus and don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I'm going to pray with you right now. Um, the prayer of salvation so that you can come into a relationship with Jesus. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, real quick, you can, re can repeat this after me. And the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. That can be found in Romans 10, 9, and 10. But we'll pray right now. If you haven't ac accepted Christ into your life, pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and that I need your help. I thank you, Father, for the ways that you have pursued me through your son, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to save me from my sins, so that way I may have a relationship with you. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity and for this great gift of salvation. I ask that you forgive me of my sins and I repent of my old life, I repent of my old ways, I repent of the life that I used to call normal, and I embrace the life that you have in store for me. I embrace the life that you say is what you have in mind that is best for me. And I say that I accept you into my life and I accept you into my heart in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for the ways that you love me. I thank you, Father, for the ways that you will just teach me to be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If that's your first time praying that prayer, I really encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because I really put a lot of videos out here and that try to help new believers in their walk with Christ, um, specifically what it means to share the gospel with your friends and family and studying the Word of God. And just some minor tips and things like that, like that you may not really think about. Like a video I released a couple months ago 
was, uh, is it okay to make notes in my Bible? And so if you want to check out that video, I encourage you to go check that out. But seriously, if you just prayed that prayer, I want you to know that your life is going to be completely different. Jesus loves you so much, and you're going to have a radically different life than you could ever imagine. Trust in Him. Trust what He says, and obey Him most of all. Until next time, be blessed.